Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have our special guest today, and it's AJ Navab. And she is an author and also a journalist. And she's here to talk about how she came up with the idea of writing this book and all, and tell us a little about herself and, you know, all the things that that got her to the point now where her book is now live and it's being distributed worldwide. So she's going to talk a little bit about that. And, you know, so uh, AJ, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and let everybody know who you are. All right. So hi, Stacey. First of all, thank you for having me here. And like you mentioned, I am a debut author. This is my first novel called Daybreak. It's a fantasy fiction. It's more of an urban fantasy mixed with high fantasy. So I wanted to go for something a little different. And yes, so like you said, I'm a journalist and I turned into an author just a couple of years back. That's when I started to, you know, write my book and get the novel in there. And yeah, it's been a great journey so far. Now, there are so many people that, you know, want to write a book and they just don't know where to begin. Now, for people who are interested in writing a book, you know, explain to them how you began. Where did you come up with the topic and the idea to write the book? Um, I've always been reading novels ever since I was a child. So I think the best and the first foremost thing that you need to do is that you yourself need to read a lot of books. So that is one way to get yourself accustomed or used to, you know, novels and how they flow. So for me, I've always been into books and I've been reading as long as I can remember. And I actually, like the author that actually got me into writing novels was R.L. Stein. I found him when I was around 11, 12 years old. And wow. I just love the way, you know, I think that was the, how do I say it? My first introduction into novels and how it was yeah. written. So Arl right. Stein was a big step for me into like uh, learning how to write novels. And although he's a horror writer and I'm a fantasy writer, yeah. um, I guess he kind of inspired me to get, you know, start with my own ideas. And that's how I began. So it's been a while since I started writing. I would just first, you know, write small short stories just for myself and then right. just to put my imagination out there and all that so my first I guess for people who are wanting to write it is just go ahead and write it you know overthinking is not going to help so right. if you have an idea you never know how it's going to sound like and never know how it's going to be so the first thing to test it is to just write it down on paper and of course it's not or or you know your laptop since paper is not the era these days yeah. so um yeah so first just write it down you never know how it's going to flow maybe it's better than you thought so the only way you can test it is to first go for it and if you can't finish it it's cool at least you try and then you know there are no regrets but if you actually get across your first 100 pages and then you end up writing your entire novel I think you're actually good to go ahead and try and publish it. I think that's an excellent uh, pointer. Now, a lot of people, you know, they have a tr trouble starting the book. They don't know how to begin, you know, because you have your, you have the beginning of the book, you have your, you know, middle ending, and then you have your hook line, especially if you want to write a second book. Um, you know, how did, did you just, did you have a beginning in your head, a, a scenario that you just wanted to begin the story with, or did you find yourself kind of moving things around a lot and changing things as you went on? Actually, I had a pretty good idea of how, how I wanted to start my story. So for me, I don't start a novel until I know that, like, exactly how I'm going to start it with and how or where I want to end it. So unless I have these two points and the middle conflict, I don't start a novel because what I believe is if it's great if you have a start, but if you don't know where your story is going to end and then you just, you know, kind of write it, then you have no idea where you're going to end it. So maybe your beginning is great, but then you kind of lose track and then you end it somewhere not so great. So I think for me, at least it's best to know where your story is going to stop and where it begins. Right. So for writing Daybreak, I actually knew where I was supposed to start it. And I had the story in mind. I had exactly I knew who to start it with and where to start it with and I knew exactly what to end and then it was just about connecting the plot lines and you know just like tearing off pages rewriting chapters and you know maybe this character is not so great maybe this character needs a little bit of tweak just figuring that out but yes I actually knew where I need to start what the conflicts was and where I needed to end it. Now, did you find yourself journaling before you started writing or did you just get on the computer and right away you started to actually write the book? 
um, in this, this book or like generally starting to write? In this book, because some people, what they do is they write a lot of ideas out. They create an outline or they might have thoughts in their head and they might put them on, on, on in a journal. And, you know, until they have that kind of like you said, that organized outline, and then they start to write the book. Did you find yourself in front of the computer just starting to write? Or did you see yourself journaling, making notes and, and trying to get a more organized outline before you started a novel? Actually, no, I'm pretty much um, how I would say it. Uh, I'm someone that likes to live in my own head. So yeah. I would actually just keep thinking about what I wanted to write. And mm -hmm. then I started writing. I never actually jolted it down as points first or as plot lines first. Okay. After a while, I did because the reason was because there's a lot of time skips in this novel. So to make sure that I got the ages right and the years right, I had to after, you know, like after my first few pages, I had to sit down and make sure, okay, I'm not skipping a year by accident or, you know, yeah. he's 27 now. And then when I go into the past, he's not 28. That's not supposed right. to happen. Yeah. So for that, at least for that, I had to plot. But no, I just actually, I had it everything. I had everything in my head and uh, all the scenes were there. So I just started writing as soon as possible. Now, what inspired you to write this story? Um, this story in particular came into my head when I was listening to music. So it was just, it just popped up and um, music does that a lot. I'm really inspired right. by music and travels. So this particular story, Daybreak, came into my head while I was just listening to some instrumentals and the scenes just popped up, the character just popped up and all the action scenes popped up. Wow. And I felt like, <laughs> and I felt it was very much fun to just think about it. So I just started jolting it down. That's great. Now, what is the title of your book? It's called Daybreak. Daybreak. Can you tell us a little about it without like, you know, spoiling the, the book, a little bit of the synopsis about what it's about? Sure. Um, so it's set in modern day Japan and it's about demon hunting, basically. So you have um, demon, like an organization of demon hunters that I call uh, hunters, basically. And yeah. then there are two main characters called Mirai and Mafuyu. And Mafuyu is tasked to protect Mirai, who is an ex-hunter from demons that are coming after him. So, but while doing so, he figures out that there is a bigger plot to what was going on and then there are secrets that he should unfold and while he unfolds it um he learns a lot about fear about forgiveness about loyalty and oh, while cool. there are action like action-packed scenes where they're running for their life and magic systems so i hope it's interesting enough for people to turn the pages and keep reading well it sounds very interested and what made you focus on um those type of, of uh characteristics where you know when you talk about you know what inspired him and you talk about his fears and so forth like that is that something that you experienced yourself did you take any type of scenarios from yourself and put them in the book um, I, well I'm not sure if it's related to me but um, to precisely say so I think I kind of gave them the opposite experience that I okay. had in my life I so got if, yeah, so if I had a good family, then I gave Mofuyu a bad one. <laughs> right, right. Because, right. And he is a troubled child in it. So I kind of took my experience and thought about how it would be to be in the opposite shoes. And that's right. what I did there. So for his fear and his loyalty, loyalty is something that I, as a person, value very much. So I wanted my character to have it. As right. for fear, um, it's not... Well, fear is something that everybody has. And I felt that was very human of him. Even though he's hunting demons, he's seeing stuff that, you know, isn't people's worst nightmares. And even for someone like him to have fear, it makes him human. So that's just something I went for right there. Now, a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, I want to write a book one day. And but they're afraid to or they don't think they can. You know, what do you say to those people who are kind of they really would like to do it, but they're unsure that they have the ability to do it? I don't think you can find out what you can or can't do until you go ahead and do it. So excellent. I don't know. I don't know if I can learn or play the piano unless I try and play the piano. Right. So, or if I'm good at singing, I won't know until I holler it out loud and someone tells me to shut up. So, <laughs> so I think you don't, you, you can't tell if you're good at something or not, unless you do it. How would you know? So, um, I would say, do not be afraid of being bad. Do not be afraid of 
doing something wrong, at least you tried. And that's the biggest thing. You can do so without regrets. I think that too is one of the biggest things too. People are afraid of what others are going to think. Oh, maybe it won't be good enough. And maybe it won't be a good book and they're afraid. But um, you know, what do you have to say about that for people who maybe don't have enough of confidence, but they do have the ability? What would you say to those people? I guess I would tell them to find out between your true friends. That's what I did first. So mm-hmm. even of course, I had doubts like, would my book be good enough? Would I be able to write it? Can I convey the messages that I'm trying to put out there? Right. So what I would do is I would tell my reader friends, not my other friends, because the ones who don't read wouldn't know they would, they're my friends. So just to make yeah. me happy, they'd be like, yeah, it's great, but I wouldn't. <laughs> so I actually sat down my cousins who reads it. I sat down my friends who read it and I told them to be brutally honest. Like, tell me, you know, if it's not good, tell me it's not good. Otherwise I wouldn't know where I'm going wrong. Or right. Right. So I experimented with them first. And then I experimented on online sites, which I'm not a part of anymore. So I would just write short stories and see if my ideas were great. So, or just good enough. So I would just write it, publish it. And then with the feedback, I would know where to improve. And that helped me out a lot. I actually got a lot of feedbacks. Um, While I was a teenager, I would write in fan fiction sites and I would get feedbacks that, oh, you know, maybe your character needs this or, hey, you have a really good plot. Why don't you expand it? So yeah, Mm -hmm. that kind of made me figure it out. I think that's great advice because like, you know, especially when people are honest, you know, I, I've had people be honest and I maybe it's, you know, sometimes didn't like what they had to say, but you know what? It helped me out a lot in the end, you know, yeah. and having those people, you know, give you constructive criticism, I, I think is, is very, very good and can be very productive. Now, do you think being a journalist actually helped you a lot, you know, improve your writing or give you ideas as you went along? Did you find what your true interests are and your passions are as a journalist? journalist? Um, I would say yes and no, mostly because journalism is very different from being an author, like extremely. It's on, I think I would say it's on two different, like two sides of the coin, because yes, it is writing, but journalism is something that you have to be very factual about. It's something you can't, um, gossip columnists are something else entirely. I'm going to go there. But as a journalist, you're supposed to be very factual. You're not supposed to tell wrong things or, you know, um, you're supposed to stick to what's true. And right. in there, so in that way, no, I didn't. That wasn't helpful because as a writer, as a fantasy writer or a novelist, you're supposed to exaggerate. You're supposed to show, you know, put colors in there. So that was one different part. But I guess what helped me as a journalist was the angles. So as a journalist, I would have to look for angles in a story. So if someone has already covered a story or covered a celebrity, let's say, and I had to write about them, I had to find a different angle that was not explored before. So right. when you come to when you come to writing fantasy stories, you have to know, um, okay, maybe you know superpowers are overdone, but you need to find an angle that no one has covered before. So I guess in that way, being a journalist did help. Did you leave like a hook liner at the end where maybe this could be, you could have a second series to this book? Um, I guess so. I mean, um, maybe not. I actually planned this as a standalone. Okay. But my editor said that I had, I created, knowingly, I created a universe that was pretty much good to expand. So yeah. she told me, yeah, so she told me that it's a little bit of a waste to keep it as a standalone. So why don't I try expanding that? And I did have some readers giving me feedback that they would love to see some, you know, like the side characters be the main characters and stuff. Yeah. So maybe I could turn it into a spin-off or a prequel series, but that is still there to be explored. And I think, um, you know, our honest reviewers also give us a lot of good impact too, because when they're reading it from an outside perspective, they're not a friend, they're not, you know, a family member, they're just a reader who bought this book just to enjoy it. They could actually right. give you some really good constructive feedback and actually point out things that you may have not even recognized yourself while writing the book. Exactly. So I did have feedbacks like that. And I was like, wow, you know, these guys pointed out something that I never even thought of. And uh, in my book, I focus more on families and friendships and um, those kind of bonds. But then they were like, wow, I can see a spark of romance here and a spark of romance there. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even think it. But then these guys saw it. And then they were like, I would really like to, you know, uh, 
some of them said that they would really like to know more about the side characters because some of them are really interesting. So why don't you go and explore it? I'm like, wow, okay. Because that's something I never thought of. But yeah. for me, the side characters were there just to move the story. But I guess in right. doing that, I made them, uh, I guess, lively enough to have their own series. Right. Because so. sometimes, you know, you do have side characters in a book and they may not play a big role in the book, but they're so interesting that people really draw to them and want to know more. And you could actually turn it, you know, you know, into a certain type of romance as well. And romances tend to be very, do very well in the book industry world. You know, a lot of people, you know, and, and you could also have that, that, you know, while you're doing that fiction writing and you're, you know, you have the fantasy incorporated in it, it could be, you know, you could turn it into a lot of different hook liners, you know, and, and different things, you know, as you go along. So, that's, right. Yeah. You know, that's a great idea, you know, and, uh, you know, is this is something um, that you plan to like focus your the rest of your career on? Or do you have, um, is this something that you just wanted to do maybe one book or maybe possibly write another book? Or is this where you, you think this is a, a direction where you want to kind of move along and kind of change your career where you're not doing so much journalism and but entering in a whole new world of fantasy, which is completely different than journalism? Yes, I actually do think I would want to go more into fantasy writing and a career as an author. I think journalism is something that I can take it with me no matter what I do. Yes. I mean, I can always give an hour or two of my time to writing a column or writing a newspaper, but right. I think being an author takes a lot more hard work than that. It takes it years for you to write a book or maybe even think of one. Right. So um, I don't want to end it with just one or two books. I would very much love for it to be my career. Now, if you had to make some tips for people, because a lot of people, you know, I've, I've spoken with, with so many people who are inspired by authors and they would love to write a book. You know, what would be some tips that you would give them some, you know, that you, to help them, you know, if they were to consider writing a book to, you know, to be able to, you know, you should maybe do this and then this and then this and, you know, to help them on their way. Because some people just don't know where to begin. Um, I would say begin by reading things that are kind of related to what you want to write. So you know what is out there, what kind of stories people consume and, you know, what are they looking for when you say fantasy? What kind of things are you looking for? And is there an idea maybe when you read a lot more, you understand what's already there out in the world. So right. you can kind of get an idea of maybe you, you might be able to realize that you have an idea that's not covered yet. So, yeah. or maybe not written yet. So I would say start with reading and then just start writing if you're really, you know, itching for it. If your fingers are itching for you to type it out or, yeah. you know, write it out, go ahead. Because why are you stopping yourself that way? Right. Um, once you write, once you start writing, I guess you will be able to figure out where you are. So if you can construct a sentence together or, you know, you might need a workshop for you to get better. You only know that once you start writing. Right. So I guess my tip would be to read a lot and then just start and you'll be able to figure it out from there. And do you, how did you come up with the title? Like, you know, how did the title come about? Was that, a, was that one of the first things you thought of? Or was that kind of as you were going along, it just like popped in your head? Uh, the title was something that popped in my head after like, I guess, six to seven pages because um, I wasn't really sure what kind of title I would give this book. I felt like there was a lot in it that I could turn into a title. But then right. I start, I chose something that was very symbolic in the book. So without spoiling a lot, <laughs> Daybreak is, you call Daybreak what is sunrise, basically. It's the start mm -hmm. of the next day. So there is right. a symbolism of it in the book. And I guess readers will be able to figure it out when they read it. Right. Why it's so important. Now, where can they find this book? Uh, they can find it online in ebook and print as well. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes and Noble. And uh, it's there out. It's coming out into bookstores as well. And um, it's there in local bookstores. So if you go and ask for them, I'm sure they can get it to you. Now, do you have a website that people can actually go on and learn about you and learn about the book in itself? Yes, I have my Instagram, I have my Facebook, and I have my website, which is being revamped at the moment. But yes, um, it will be out there soon. Now, what is, do you, ha do you have a, a domain name for your website already? Yes, it's ajnavab.com. 
Oh, very easy. Now, very can you easy. spell that for people that don't know how to spell your last name? Just uh, sure. AJ and then it's it's AJ and A V A B dot com. Okay, terrific. Now, um, with with all this information about your new book, um, now are you going like are you going to actually um, once it's in the bookstores do some book sign-ins and 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 kind of travel a little and and try to get the word out like um now as you're a journalist yourself will you be pu publicizing this in in different magazines and articles and websites or you haven't gotten to that point yet where um you know you haven't planned out the marketing yet um i have planned it out so i hope it will reflect soon enough and as for travel there are still restrictions that i'm seeing due to covid as well mm -hmm. so although the bookstores are still opening up some of them are still hesitant to get in you know like large crowds and a lot of them are limited at the moment still so um i'll see about that i mean that's something we can still explore yeah. so hopefully we'll get there soon now a lot of places now, like like Barnes and Nobles, they're doing virtual book signings as well. Yes. Where they're doing, yes. you can do you know a little uh, talk, and then you know you, they could purchase the book, and then you could send out the actual signed copy. So those are things that you know you can actually consider as well. Yes, definitely, I'm considering it. I hope it works out and all goes well. Well, I hope it works out too. You know, it's been a pleasure having you, you know, on the show. And, you know, I look forward to, you know, hearing more about this book and hopefully I'll be able to, you know, get a copy and be able to read it myself because it's, it sounds very exciting. I really uh, Please do. Please I, do. I would love to. I would love to hear your feedback as well. Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's been a pleasure having you on the show and thank you so much for everything, you know. Thank you. Thank you for having me as well. It was fun. It was fun talking about it. Oh, definitely. I, I'm very excited to read it. You know, it's, I, I've always been intrigued with fantasy. So this is a, it's something that I would really um, enjoy reading. And just for, um, for uh, just to remind the, uh, the, re the listeners right now, just tell them uh, once again, the, the name of your book. It's called Daybreak. Okay. And, and you can find it in Barnes and Nobles right now online. Yes. Online, uh, on Amazon, on Kindle, and if you want the print copy, you can, again, buy it on Amazon, or you can go into your local bookstores and ask for a print copy. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really do appreciate, you know, you know, explaining about the book and also giving, you know, listeners, you know, who are interested in writing a book, some really good, helpful tips. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a great day. You have a great day, too.